Are you one of millions of Americans that don't understand virtual networks within Azure? Well, if so, I got you covered. Hey everybody, welcome back to Nerdy Tech. Mike here, and today we're gonna talk about virtual networks, also known as VNets, within Azure. We're gonna talk about what they are, how we, how we would use them, if we can talk correctly, and then most importantly, like we always do on this channel, I'm gonna show you how to actually create your first VNet. The only thing you really need to follow along with is a free Azure account if you don't already have one. If you have a paid one, that's fine too. Just make sure you delete your resources when you're done so you don't get a surprise bill at the end of the month. But that said, let's jump right into it. So what is a VNet? Well, a VNet is essentially just a virtual network. And I think a lot of people will overcomplicate this. So I'm gonna put VNet or virtual network equals VNet. Now, what, do, what is, when I say it's just a network, it's just a virtual network, what does that mean? Well, what do networks have? They have subnets. So this is our VNet. And I'll just say VNet A. Like I said, they have subnets. And I'll say subnet A, subnet B. And what are subnets? Well, they're just carved out slices of IP addresses, right? That we can assign to things like virtual machines, Kubernetes clusters, whatever. So uh, we'll say this one is 10.1.1.0 slash 24. And this one is 10, whoa, I was about to draw two for some reason. 10.2.0.0 slash 16. That's a much larger one. That's it. That's, those are subnets, right? And by the way, you just learned VNets. So a VNet is essentially a thing in Azure that we can create that can have multiple subnets inside of it. And one of the really cool things is, I'm not sure I can draw a good uh, like shield, but we have this concept of NSGs and an NSG is firewall policy. So I'll put, and by the way, that stands for network security group, but I'm gonna put firewall policy. And we can assign NSGs to a subnet. That's why I'm drawing it here. So we could assign, uh, you know, an NSG there. We maybe have, you know, in this one, we have NSG, you know, five. So those are two different NSGs. So we could have a different set of firewall policy affecting different subnets within the same VNet or virtual network. Pretty straightforward, pretty cool. That's it. So. There's a lot more to VNets. Now we also have concepts such as VPN. We can set up VPNs to our VNets. We can set up communication from a VNet to another VNet, even across subscriptions, which is pretty cool. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things we can do with VNets, but like I said, the goal here is just to understand at a high level what it is, and then to go into Azure and actually implement it. So let's do that. So here we are inside of Azure. Now, uh, if you're brand new to it, I've done a bunch of videos kind of showing how to navigate through the portal. So I'm gonna assume you've at least navigated a little. If you haven't, definitely check out some of my Azure playlist stuff. Uh, I think that would be really helpful. But in this case, if you don't know where you're going, um, you may have a little tile for virtual networks on the top here. If you don't, you may also have it on the left here under favorites. Again, you probably won't if you're brand new. So you can either hit all services and then filter for virtual networks. That's what we're looking for. Or my preferred method is to go to the top here and just type in virtual network. And then it'll be this service right here. So it's got these kind of like little, uh, I just blanked out. What are those like carrots? Something like that. Uh, but we're gonna click those. That brings us here. So we see we don't have any VNets in our environment. So we wanna create one. So if we go to create, we click that plus. And first thing it's gonna do is ask us what subscription do you wanna create this VNet inside of? Uh, we'll use our, actually I'll use my dev subscription. I can't talk today, man, I might, want, I might need to see a doctor about that. Um, all right, so we have resource group here. If we change that to something we do not, of course in the dev subscription, I don't have any resource groups other than this default one. So we're gonna hit create new. And if you're not familiar with the concept of a resource group, it's just a group that houses resources. I guess that makes a lot of sense, right? So uh, resources being disks, IP addresses, network interfaces, VMs, 
um, networks, VNets go inside resource groups. So um, typically you would have you'd have one already established. I'll just create one. I'll just say test RG for resource group and we'll hit OK. All right, so that's going to be good. Um, virtual network name. What do we want to name this? I'm going to say uh, prod VNet. Actually, no, this is dev. So let's do dev VNet. Then you specify a region wherever this specific VNet will live. Uh, in this case, East US is fine. Let's go ahead and let's head over to IP addresses. Now, I said before when we drew out that we could have multiple subnets within a VNet, but that's not the default. So we can see here, if I collapse this right here, this is one block of IP space that we've already carved out by default for this VNet, and it's quite a bit. Um, 16, that's what, 65,536 addresses, something. Did I get that right? Someone will check me on that, let me know. Uh, oh, yep, there we go. I mean, it's not like I have two CCIEs or anything, so I guess I should be able to call up like a little bit of information once in a while uh, that is networking related. Um, <laughs> and that doesn't happen very often, and when it does, I'm usually wrong. But in this case, uh, if we look below here, we see that we have default and it says 10.0.0.0, and that is up to 255, and that says 256 addresses. Mike, wait a minute, what's going on? Something doesn't make sense here. All right, I'm gonna make this simple for you. So, this is our subnet. In this case, we only have one subnet. This is our VNet IP range. So we derive the subnet from a chunk of that VNet range. So if I wanted to create a new subnet, say like right below here, I could look at um, this range right here and pick something out of there. And in this case, we did right here, this default was 10.0.0.0. So maybe my new one is 10.1.0.0/24, something like that, just to be kind of a little more kind of common sense and follow some kind of pattern. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. So if we want, uh, we could, let me go ahead and get the drawing off here. Um, let's go ahead and add a subnet. So we'll hit add a subnet. And I want to show you, by the way, just to show you that kind of evidence or um, that concept I just illustrated, I want to prove something. So look right here, it says IP address range right here. Um, and we could also have another range there clearly, right? We could have another IP address space. In this case, we only have one. And like I said, that's a lot of IPs, so we don't really need to expand that. But uh, in this case, it's already recommending a, you know, kind of the next subnet. But I said I wanted to do 10.1.0. So we'll do that. And look at this right here. The subnet address range 10.1.0.0 slash 24 is not contained in the address space 10.0.0.0 slash 16, which means I get my, my CCIEs taken away because I was not thinking about that. So the reason basically is that this, this range, and it's hard to see for me, is 10.0. It begins 10.0. So everything has to begin 10.0 essentially. This is just basic subnetting, y'all. Um, so yeah, in this case, we could just do 10.0.1. That's fine. All right, and we don't get that, that little warning anymore. Um, that's it though. I mean, from there, we can leave everything to the default. Uh, we do have network security group right here. So this right here is where we would put, if we wanted to apply any firewall policy to this subnet specifically, that's where we could do it. Now we can do it after we create this. So don't stress it if you don't do it here, that's perfectly fine. Um, but that's it. I think I'm going to hit add. And we see it added the additional subnet. I didn't give it a name. I probably should have. I probably should edit that. And maybe we say, um, let's see, um, we'll call this uh, dev uh, subnet, something like that, and hit save. OK. So that's good. Um, let's go ahead and go ahead and hit review and create. All right. So while that's creating, so all we did now, we created that overall kind of VNet. We had the one IP address space already there. That's the 10.0.0.0 slash 16. We created an additional subnet once we figured out how to subnet after bragging about knowing how to subnet. And now uh, this should be, yep, right there. It's complete. So if we click go to resource, that takes us right to this virtual network. We can tell because it shows us the type right here 
and it shows us the name. And then also, if you're in here enough, you recognize that icon that represents VNets. So we're looking at this VNet. Um, not a lot here that we really care about for right now. If you want to look at the subnets within this VNet, you can click subnets right here. That'll just show us what we saw before, but it will also show you in this field any security groups or NSGs, firewall policy, that you may have applied to these subnets. So that can also be very useful if you're troubleshooting, trying to understand something. Maybe you accidentally applied one you didn't mean to or applied the wrong one, so on. Um, and by the way, one of the nice things about applying NSGs to the subnet is that you can deploy however many VMs you want inside of that VNet and it will automatically be protected by that NSG. So that's the benefit, because you can also apply an NSG directly to a VM's network interface, but obviously that depends on someone to actually assign it to that interface or to have it automated or something like that. Um, the other thing I'll point out here while we're here, this connected devices tab, it's going to be empty here, uh, but once we connect something to this network, then it will show up here. So this is where you, you know, if someone said, well, what devices, you know, have a connection into that network, you could pull this up and boom, you have a list. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Now in our case, I'm gonna head over to virtual machines and I'm going to create a super quick virtual machine just to illustrate the point and uh, make sure that we can connect to the proper network. I will call this uh, dev VM test, something like that. Uh, we'll leave everything here, I think. Let's see. Let's make this a Linux server. Um, I think that's fine. That looks good. Okay, so we'll head over to networking. And under networking, if you leave a new VM to the default, look at what it does here. It says virtual network new. And it says right here, this is the name dev VM test VNet. So if we leave this to the default, it's going to try to create its own VNet for each VM, which is not ideal. Um, so in our case, we're going to change that dropdown and we're going to select dev-vnet, that's the VNet we created. And now once we create it, or once we select it, it lets us also select the subnet. So if I change this, you see I have that default subnet, the slash 24, and then I also have the dev subnet that we created when I forgot how to subnet and that's there. So I'm going to click, I'm going to click the dev subnet. All right. That's good. Um, public IP. If we leave this the default, it will allocate a public IP and a private IP for the VM. Uh, I don't want a public IP, so I'm going to change this to none. All right. And that's good for the sake of this video. I think that's fine. So let's hit review and create. And one more time, oops, what did we forget? Validation failed. Let's go back to basics. Isn't that ironic? Go back to basics. Um, oh, okay, I have to name the, the SSH public key. Test key, we don't care. We're not using it. All right, let's hit review and create. And validation passed and create. All right, so we're gonna give that a minute. Once that finishes, coming online, we're just going to go into the VM and just validate that everything went as planned and that it got an IP on the correct network and that's it, our job's done. All right, so our deployment was complete of this virtual machine. Let's do our final verification. We'll go over to go to resource right here, which will take us to the virtual machine. Uh, once we're there, we just wanna scroll down just a little under the networking section right here. Look at this, we see private IP address is 10.0.1.4. We recognize this because that's the subnet that we created for our dev network. Um, in addition to that, if we wanted to know a little bit more details, we can see it shows right here. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can blow this up. There we go. That's a little better. So you actually can see right here. So this lists the virtual network. So that's the VNet. And then this lists the subnet that it is connected to. So it actually is pretty nice. It gives us a lot of information there. Um, and obviously it's in blue. If we click it, that'll take us to the dev subnet, which is what I'm gonna do. And specifically, or I should say dev VNet. Uh, once we're here, now I wanna go to subnets. And let's see, we do see, look at this, dev subnet now only has 250 available IPs. Used to be 251. So that's kind of further validation. And then if we go to connected devices, 
now look at this. We see dev VM test six underscore Z1, some funky looking name, but we can see that is a network interface and we see the IP address allocated to that. So that's it. That's all we have to do to create a VNet, create subnets and connect VMs to it. Our job's done. So I hope you found this video useful. I just wanted to do something that would get you kind of exposed to some of the networking within Azure. There's a lot more to cover and I will be covering it, but this is just kind of an intro. I hope you guys stay safe and healthy. And until next time, stay nerdy, make sure you subscribe on your way out. Have a good one.